Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me today for the conclusion to the top 100 cards shown on YouTube countdown that I have been at throughout the month of December here, looking at the 100 best and not necessarily monetary value, just my favorite 100 cards or groups of cards that I've shown in my time here on YouTube, which has been uh, coming up on two years in another uh, couple or few months here. So today we're going to get through cards 25 through number one. It's the fourth and final installment. So these are the 25 best couple dozen cards plus one here that I thought were heads and tails above the rest. And uh, let's just get down to it. Uh, so in slot 25, we have a playing era Ted Williams, the 1955 tops in a PSA three, the splendid splinter. Um, just an awesome, awesome card. Um, this was either the first or second graded Ted Williams card that I ever owned or playing era Ted Williams card that I ever owned. Um, I have a couple more that I've added since, but um, just really love this one. I've talked about it, I know, in, in a few videos recently, but I've really warmed up to 55 tops being kind of a favorite set of mine uh, of the decade, and I even prefer it to 56 tops, with the action shot in the background, and of course, you know, growing up a Red Sox fan, but just a baseball fan in general, um, any playing days Ted Williams card is still just like jaw-dropping and, and kind of a mind-blowing thing to me. Uh, to hold in hand. So um, really wanted to get this one kind of high in the countdown. Um, just a, a really nice card, and I think it was a fitting number 25. I'm going to move over to uh, hockey for the next couple of cards before we go back to baseball here. So in the number 24 slot, this is one that I just bought this past year, and it was one of my big fish cards of the month, it is the 1980 Opeechee Wayne Gretzky. So this is his second year card, pretty awesome. Now, uh, you know, well over 40 years old, just a really great action shot here. Um, you don't have the, the scratch away effect on the puck that you had with the top set in 1980. Uh, Opeechee was printed exactly as you see it here. And this is just a really, really nice example of this card. Um, was really grateful to add this earlier this year as I kind of continue to look at what some of the bigger significant holes are or were in my Gretzky collection, try to fill them in. Um, I had the second year tops, um, but this Opeechee card is more desirable and it's very, very tough on centering. And so I took a long time finding this uh, seven and a half that is, in my opinion, um, just one of the best centered and, you know, overall most visually appealing copies that I've seen in a long time. And I'm just really, really happy to have that in the collection of number 99. Maybe the bigger, uh, the biggest Gretzky that I picked up this past year. Uh, in the number 23 spot, we have the modern guy who sort of looked at, you know, maybe as the heir apparent. Uh, obviously, he has a long way to go in terms of winning championships. Uh, but as far as individual accolades and putting up insane numbers of goals and points um, and just kind of being a degree above all of his peers... We have the 2015 Opeechee Platinum Connor McDavid, and this is the Trax parallel of his rookie card. Um, parallel is named so for obvious reasons. Looks like there's tracks going diagonally across the card, like tire tracks. Um, but yeah, just an awesome card. Another one that I picked up um, just this past year that was a pretty significant one for me, and a card that I've been after a while. Finally, this thing dipped down and, and found a copy at a price that was just, you know, couldn't be beat, in my opinion, and finally cross this off the list. I think he's the most important hockey player of this generation. Um, certainly not a very bold prediction there. I think a lot of people agree on that. And just really happy to have this chromium refractor parallel of his rookie, uh, especially with OPG Platinum kind of being the, the best chromium set in hockey. Uh, one more hockey here in slot 22 before we go back to baseball. It is the uh, Yaramir Yager rookie from the inaugural upper deck set but it's the buyback version from the 2010 Upper Deck 20th Anniversary Buyback Promotion. So you can see the large silver stamp here, 1990 to 2010, 20th Anniversary. Um, these were pretty tough. They were included in the Upper Deck French product only in 2010, and they fell at, I think, just one, per two, one or two per hobby box only in French, and they parallel, you know, a 500-card checklist you know, in the inaugural Upper Deck set, 
I believe there to be fewer than maybe 20 of each of these in existence. And I think that number, you know, maybe even more like 10 or less. Um, there aren't any officially published numbers that I'm aware of. Um, but this guy, he's still playing at age 50 uh, overseas. And uh, he's, you know, a top 10 player in, in many regards, uh, statistically speaking. And, uh, you know, in the generation that I grew up in collecting in, in the 90s, uh, late 80s, throughout the 90s, like he was just the name in hockey. Awesome personality, awesome player. This upper deck rookie card is a very iconic card of my youth. And getting like a super rare buyback version of this for my hockey card collection um, just, you know, it was a no brainer to include this one on the checklist. I've only seen one to two others of those you know, ever hit eBay or, or really in existence that I know of. Um, so just really happy to own that card. Uh, slot 21, we're back to vintage baseball. And it is the second Ted Williams card of today. And in this top 25, um, just love Williams. Obviously, you know, a top five hitter, I would say, in baseball history, when you just overall hitter, um, when you consider all of the aspects, you know, power, average, um, he's got to be up there with anybody that you could name. And uh, I have his 1957 tops release in slot 21 on the countdown. So just a, a really nice, clean example of this card. Um, don't buy PSA 6 50s Hall of Famers anymore. Um, probably more in the two to three range nowadays, but um, bought this many years back. And kind of a cool story. Um, I wrote a sports card blog prior to being on YouTube and I hosted on the blog a card draft um, to raise money. So I took about 100 cards that were probably valued somewhere in the one to five, maybe $10 range, and then a couple of nicer cards that were maybe in the 40 to $50 range that I didn't really have a place for in my collection. Like a lot of them were dollar box pickups over time, things like that. Um, I got a bunch of people to participate, like 10 people. They all chipped in, I think 25 or $30. And they got to have a draft where they picked cards out of that pool. Um, each person got somewhere between 20 and 30 cards. So it was about a buck a card for them. They loved it. And I raised up enough money to take the proceeds from that and go out and buy this 57 Tops Ted Williams. So I, I cleared out some space. I got rid of about 100 cards from my uh, collection, made a little room that I, I wasn't really appreciating very much. And in return, got this card that I love so much um, that even many years later, it is still... In my countdown here within the top 25 uh, cards I've shown on YouTube. So there's the 57 Williams in slot 21. Uh, down to slot 20, another one that I picked up just this past year as part of my big fish experiment. It is the Ricky Henderson rookie card from 1980 Tops Baseball, a card that I felt like was a pretty big hole in my baseball collection really since I've been back at it now as an adult for 15 years. Um, I am one who uh, agrees that this is almost like the last true rookie card um, when you think about it, because the following year we would get Fleer and Donruss. Um, and if you asked, you know, somebody, hey, do you want this Cal Ripken rookie? Their first question would be, well, is it Donruss, Fleer or Topps? Uh, but all the way up through 1980, um, at least from the mid 50s through 1980, it was a Topps world. And when you say Ricky Henderson rookie card, nobody has to ask which one. It is this card and uh, really happy to have this eight and a half. Um, had I picked this up 10 or 15 years ago, probably could have got a nine. These days I am not willing to pay what a nine commands, but I did love finding this eight and a half at what I think is a very good price. And it kind of differentiates it, uh, from the eights out there and the centering on this one, you know, centering for me is a big deal and just really happy with the centering that I found on this copy. So the 80 Ricky Henderson rookie card from tops is slot number 20. Uh, inside the top 20 now at slot number 19, we have a big grouping of cards. And this is the biggest grouping that I put in any slot in the countdown, but they really go together and I didn't want to split them apart. It is the complete set from Panini Dominion Hockey over 10 years ago now of the Brass Bonanza Hartford Whalers autographs. So diehard Whalers fan growing up and diehard collector. In the Dominion release uh, that Panini put out when they had a license to produce hockey cards... Um, they included an entire set that was based on uh, Brass Bonanza, which is like the theme or intro song for my beloved Hartford Whalers. And uh, just a lot of big names and Hall of Famers in this set. They're all on card. And it's, it's an entire insert set based around the Hartford Whalers. And so I was just so attracted to this. 
A couple of these are short printed, like Bobby Hull here is numbered to just 24. I have copy two, um, and I'll just fly through the rest of these. Pat, Ver I'm sorry, Brendan Shanahan, jumping ahead there. Keith Primo. Nick Fodiu, who was, uh, came over from the New England Whalers in the WHA. Paul Coffey, wasn't a Whaler for long, but one of the best defenders of his era. Ray Ferraro, Mr. Chicken Parm. And again, all these are on-card autographs, like, and the the lower uh, or the more available ones are numbered out of 50, and a couple are 24. So even though it's only a 10-card insert set, here's Tiger Williams, who is known for uh, penalties and spending time in the sin bin. Um, even though it's only a 10-card in insert set, it was very difficult to complete. And uh, to this day, like, I have collectors hit me up on Trading Card Database saying, hey, would you be willing to part with, you know, any of these? I haven't seen this one surface in three years or whatever it is. Daryl Ray, short-term uh, backup goalie. Ron Francis, the greatest Hartford Whaler in history. His is also numbered out of 50. I think Brendan Shanahan was also, uh, was the other out of 24. And then last but not least, the little ball of hate, Pat Verbeek. Awesome. Member of the Hall of Very Good. And look at the mullet game here. Just love it. So um, that is, you know, maybe the coolest insert set that I have ever completed as a collector. I'm just really, really happy to have all 10 of those. And then I kind of got on those quickly after release because trying to complete that now would just be um, probably an impossible task. So that's the number 19 slot. Uh, number 18, we have a 1950 Bowman card. You're going to see a lot of vintage from here on out. It is the Yogi Berra. In a PSA 2. Um, this is you know one of my favorite images on any card from the 50s. Love Barra, love his personality, love catcher cards, love 1950 Bowman. I mean, this just checks like every box for me. Um, just an absolutely beautiful card. Picked this one up in, uh, as part of that flip that I did where I sold a soccer card that I paid five dollars for and then used the proceeds to buy five different graded vintage Hall of Famer cards. Um, and uh, the Barrow was arguably my favorite of those five. I just, that image just gets me. I, I could stare at that card all day long. Uh, next up in slot number 17, this is another Hank Aaron that I picked up for my run. And I scored this in the year 2022 as well. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to find affordable vintage uh, I'm finding, but um, got this one earlier in the year for my run. It is the 1956 Tops. Aaron, and tell me uh, if you've ever seen a better looking PSA 2 than this card, I would love to see it. I mean, this is a stunner from 56 Tops. I will never need to upgrade this card at all. It is completely gorgeous front and back. Um, I haven't spent a ton of time looking over it to see why it got the the two designation, but um, the reason I haven't is because I don't really care much. It just uh, made it affordable, and this is a gorgeous copy. I mean, if you covered this up and showed this to someone, they're probably going to guess, you know, at least five or six all day long. So uh, not sure what happened there, but one of the finer uh, examples condition-wise in my Hank Aaron run and a card that I'm very, very proud that I was able to, to locate and to add to the collection. So that is slot number 17. Number 16 spot is a case of uh, just some real oddities or weirdness, uh, which I am always game for. But I found this 1936 Ritzma Olympics card featuring the goalie Teiji Honma for Japan in an outdoor rink in Germany, rocking the Japan sweater, the brown pads and, you know, wooden stick and that amazing mask and glasses combo there or goggles like Man, I don't know. I couldn't find much about this guy. I don't think his hockey career lasted long. Um, Japan didn't advance in the tournament or anything, although they did play, you know, at, they exceeded expectations at this tournament. Um, but what I think about, uh, or, you know, that is cool about this one is kind of the historical significance of, you know, this event and this player who's from the Japanese national team. This is mid-1930s Germany. We know what would happen you know, in the coming years between Germany and Japan and the world events and um, everything that goes into that combined with this awesome image. Never knew this card existed. Um, I stumbled upon it when I was looking at other 1936 Olympic cards, uh, namely Jesse Owens, but other 
other cards uh, from the Winter and Summer Olympics. And as soon as I saw this card and, you know, it was reasonably priced, in my opinion anyway, at under $100, um, I just had to add that to the collection. So I um, was able to bring that one home. And that's one of the more bizarre goalie cards or hockey cards that I have in my entire PC. And uh, I'm just really grateful to own it. I'm not afraid to put a complete oddball card like that inside my top 25. I think that's a fitting number 16. Uh, for number 15, we're going to get back into more familiar territory here. Vintage Baseball It is the 1953 Tops Yogi Berra in a PSA 6. Um, bought this one a lot of years back for my 53 top set build. Picked it up on foursharpcorners.com. And uh, really happy with this copy. I don't need my 53 Tops cards to look this nice uh, for my set build. But at the time that I procured this, um, there was a sale going on at Four Sharp Corners. Had recently gotten either my holiday work bonus or my tax refund. Um, this was a few years back. And this opportunity presented itself to kind of snag this one in a, a higher grade than I would normally go for. And with it being one of the more important cards in the set and Barra being a player that I respect a lot. Um, decided to reach and go for it and just really happy that I did a few years later here in the rear view mirror. So we'll leave that one out up front next to the other Barra. Uh, in retrospect, I may have swapped these, if I, or I may if I do this countdown again. I think I like that 50 Bowman just a hair more as much as I love 53 tops just because that image is so awesome. Um, that takes us down to slot 14, another vintage baseball classic here. It is the 1964 tops Pete Rose the second year card, the all-star rookie trophy, his first solo card. Of course, his rookie in 63 is a multiplayer floating head card. Um, I would love to get one of those someday just because of its you know significance in the hobby. But to me, aesthetically, I'll take the, the 64 all day long. This card is just awesome. And I bought this a long while back uh, when the hobby was much different than it is now and paid $26 for a, a second year slabbed Pete Rose. I know it's a two, but um, I think it looks really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy with that. Uh, I like this card enough that if I saw the right copy someday in the future at the right price, I wouldn't rule out potentially upgrading it. But um, for now, I'm just grateful to have that card at all in any condition. And the all-time hit king, you know, he may never get enshrined, sadly, but he certainly deserves to be uh, within my top 15 and uh, in the countdown. And so I put that 64 tops Pete Rose at number 14. Uh, number 13 now, uh, probably the most overall important or highly recognized Alex Ovechkin card in existence. The 2005 Upper Deck Young Guns OV rookie card. Um, I mean, if, if you're an OV collector, which I am, this is the cornerstone card that you shoot for. You know, assuming you're not a, a multi-millionaire who's searching for like on-card autos from the cup or patch cards or something like that. But as far as, you know, classic Ovechkin collecting goes, this is the card. The, the Upper Deck Young Guns rookie. Really happy that I picked this up in a PSA 9 um, back in the day when things were a little bit less crazy. Just knew it was going to be an important card that I would have a hard time getting later on and was able to scoop this one up. And uh, Ovi is probably my favorite modern hockey player to collect. He uh, It's looking more and more like he may catch Wayne Gretzky um, at the very least. He's uh, probably, by the time this airs, already passed Gordie Howe and is number two all-time and one of only three guys to ever score 800 goals in the NHL. And if his health can stay with him here and he can give us another four or five seasons, he may hang up the skates as the greatest goal scorer of all time. So um, this card, I think, has the potential in the future if I redo this list and history plays out uh, or the future plays out the right way here um, to be even higher than number 13. Uh, but for now, I ranked it just outside the top 12. And now let's get into the final dozen. Uh, obviously, these are all going to be pretty amazing, awesome cards uh, to get into the top 12. And the first one is one that I picked up this past year, the Sandy Koufax rookie card. A lowly PSA 2.5. Um, I'll save the whole spiel, but again, I'm, I'm going for visual appeal and just overall look. Of the card more so than the grade on the slab so the two and two and a half kept this one affordable and um, just a card that i've dreamed about since i was a boy collecting baseball cards you know in the early 90s and feels good to finally have uh, put this one to bed here in uh, 2022 and get the the left arm of god so that is slot number 12. 
In the 11 spot, this one may surprise you to see this high. The 1990 score, Eric Lindros, future superstar. This is an autographed version with a Hall of Fame inscription on it. Um, if you weren't collecting hockey cards in the early 90s, you'll probably have a hard time understanding this selection. But if you were, and you're familiar with this card, then th this is probably the right place to put it. This was a giant card in the hobby in 1990. I, I always um, link it to the 1989 Upper Deck Ken Griffey Jr. rookie. This was that card in the hockey landscape. Lindros was the guy. He was going to be the next Gretzky and Lemieux, the heir apparent. There was all this drama with his drafting and signing. Score is the only company that produced a hockey card of him in 1990. There was no Tops or Upper Deck Lindros in 1990, so this was it. Um, pulling one of these out of a, a pack as a kid, you felt like you were you know, a future millionaire. Um, as it turns out, they produced a million of them, as we all know. And uh, Lindros suffered a lot of concussions and injuries that kept him from being the next great one, although he did still put together a Hall of Fame career, as we can see with the inscription here. And I'm just very, very pleased to have a copy of this that is autographed and with an autograph that looks this nice to boot. Um, I think this is a really, really special hockey card. Uh, more because of what it means to the hobby of hockey cards than what Lindros meant as a player to the NHL, if that makes sense. So happy to put that one inside uh, at the top dozen here at number 11. Now we get to the top 10. In slot 10, the card that was like the holy grail of my youth in my childhood collection, the 82 tops Cal Ripken Jr., Bob Bonner, and Jeff Schneider, future stars rookie card for the Orioles, um, had a had the fortune of getting a vending box from my dad as a, a gift growing up of 82 tops. Pulled one of these, which I still have to this day, in a one-touch. Um, and that really fueled my love for this set and this player. Um, 1982 is my birth year. Cal Ripken was a, one of my favorite three players growing up. And this is, you know, as 80s baseball cards go, this is one of the more iconic cards out there. So um, nostalgia is playing a big part. Uh, in this one, making it into slot number 10, but I'm okay with that. This is my countdown, and uh, so my nostalgia is going to play a big part. And so the Ripken Jr. Multiplayer Rookie gets slot number 10. Number 9, we have the 58 Tops All-Star Mickey Mantle. Um, this was the first playing era Mickey Mantle that I ever acquired. Um, I talked in a previous countdown about the 66 Tops Mantle, being the first like base card of his that I ever got. Um, but years before that, I decided to work on the 58 All-Star set because it is the first All-Star subset in any Tops release. And so getting the Mick from that and getting this card, I was like spellbound. Um, you know, I, had, I was probably 25 to 30 years old. So I had been collecting for years as a kid and an adult and just holding a Mickey Mantle card in my hand from the 50s was like a mind-blowing experience. It still is um, to this day. Plus, I, I just love the look of these with the bright red, the yellow, and the stars in the background. Nice swing here. A lot of these are portrait shots um, in this subset, but I love that Mick is, you know, taking a home run hack here. And so this is a mix for me of awesome card, titan of the hobby, and personal nostalgia um, that kind of combine to get this one inside the top 10 at number nine. Uh, number eight, probably the greatest card I've ever pulled out of a pack myself, the 2015-16 Upper Deck Young Guns Connor McDavid Rookie Card. Um, quick story behind this, because I want to keep this to uh, probably around a half hour, just a little bit over. In the uh, winter of 2015, was out doing some Christmas shopping in the days leading up to Christmas, grabbed a single retail tin at Target of 2015-16 Upper Deck. Opened it up after wrapping some presents that night. Opened the first pack. And I kid you not, the Connor McDavid Young Gun was in the very first pack of the tin. It was the ultimate card that you could pull from that product. A few years later here, he has proven to be everything that, you know, the hype thought he could be leading into that season. And this is now a really big card. I'm so grateful that I pulled one on my own from a $29.99 tin instead of having to go out there and fork over uh, the money to acquire one of these, which I absolutely would have done because it's it's too important a hockey card for me not to have. Um, but the awesomeness of the card combined with the personal tale of me being able to, to pull it out of a retail tin 
uh, gets this one all the way up to number eight in the countdown. Number seven, we got the Moose, Marc Messier, the 1980 Opeachy rookie card. Same set as the Gretzky that we saw earlier in this episode, the second year Gretzky. With Messier, this is the rookie. Um, he was not on the tops checklist in 1980. So this Opeachy card represents his one and only rookie. It's kind of like the Ricky Henderson came out the same year, only true rookie. Um, just an awesome card that I'm so grateful to have. Um, targeted this one again this year because I was trying to fill, you know, holes in my collection as far as key hockey rookies. Had never owned this, made it all the way to almost 40 years old. Never had a Messier rookie. Finally put it to bed and just very, very happy with this high quality, in my opinion, uh, well-centered PSA 8. Moving in uh, to slot number seven, and there, it's going to be a lot of rookies from here on out. I'm just warning you. Uh, not all rookies, but a lot. I'm, I'm a child of the late 80s, early 90s with respect to the hobby. So to me, I, I can't get away from that rookie card is king mentality. But next up in slot number uh, six, we have the 1985 Opeachy Mario Lemieux rookie, Le Magnifique. Just an absolute wonder on skates. Awesome story. Um, all of the adversity that he would overcome in his career. The numbers that he would put up career-wise, even though he missed so much time with injury and illness. A lot of people say that he is the most dominating player that they ever saw play. Um, I don't know. It's, you know. He's right up there with Gretzky. It's so hard to, to pick in a debate like that. Um, but what I will say is he's the ultimate what could have been case. You know, I think he could have been a 2,000 point scorer, um, you know, possibly surpassed guys like Howe and Yager and others had health just stayed with him. Um, and, and this rookie card is one of the most important cards of the 1980s, maybe the most important hockey card of the 1980s period. So for that reason, I think it deserves to be all the way up in uh, slot number six on the countdown. Uh, number five here, this is one that I picked up this past year and I just thought it was beyond cool. It's one of those um, items where the uniqueness of it scores at some major points. It is the 1986 Tops Patrick Waugh rookie card. However, if I slide this down a little bit, and uh, this is just a nick in the case here, not, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the outer team set bag that I have this in, but this is the copy from the Patrick Waugh collection. So Patrick is a card and memorabilia collector. And this is actually the copy of his Topps rookie card that he owned himself that was submitted to SGC as part of his personal collection to be graded and sold off. Um, so he had a lot of nice stuff from the Patrick Waugh collection that was available um, at auction this past year. But I just immediately fell in love with this card. This is the one that I wanted. I went at it and I went at it hard because he is probably the greatest goalie of all time. It's, you know, a key rookie card. So rookie of the greatest goalie of all time owned by that greatest goalie of all time. I mean, this was, this is the equivalent of like, if you had the 52 tops Mickey Mantle that was owned by Mickey Mantle in his personal collection uh, on the hockey front. So um, maybe could have even put this one higher on the list. Um, but in any event, it made the top five uh, here for all the cards that I have ever shown on YouTube. So that just shows you how much I appreciate the uniqueness and kind of the backstory that makes that item cool. All right, at number four, we have the last grouping of cards that we're going to see in the countdown. These are five that I put together because I couldn't decide between them. They represent a product that, uh, or a project, I should say, that took me years to complete that I finally wrapped up in 2022. Uh, the first set that I ever collected as a young kid and ripped packs of on the baseball front was 1990 Tops. So it's always had a special place in my heart. The reason I became a Nolan Ryan fan is because he was on the first five cards of the checklist that year uh, with a subset celebrating his 5,000 career strikeouts. And this year, I was able to finally get an authenticated autographed copy of the complete run. So here's card number one, his base card with the Rangers. Then we have the four card subset for the 5,000 strikeouts showing each of the four teams that he would play with in his major league career. The Mets at card number two, the Angels at card number three, the Astros with whom he spent pretty much the decade of the 80s at number four, and card number five, the tip of the cap Texas Rangers card final team he played with. So 
to get all of those autographed and encapsulated, it was quite an initiative. And when that final piece fell into play earlier this year, I did a video on it. It was one of the most satisfying things that I've ever done in my time in the hobby. And for that reason, I put that grouping of Ryan autos all the way up at number four. In the number three slot, and I mean, these top three, you could really arrange in any order. These three are kind of heads and tails above everything else. The 1953 tops Mickey Mantle. Um, I fell in love with this card as a kid because of the reprint set that Topps put out in 1991, the Archives release that was 1953 Topps reprinted. I had the mantle. I thought it was the most beautiful baseball card ever made. I fell in love with the, the lore and the myth behind Mantle, and uh, I never thought I would own an actual copy of this card in my life. Um, so honored to have this. If I could keep only 10 cards from my entire collection, to this day, whether I've shown them on YouTube or not, or ever owned them, period. This is one I would never give up. I hope to keep this card with me uh, for the entirety of my collecting life. Um, it's simply glorious. I'll never own, likely, the 51 Bowman or the 52 Tops, but that's fine with me. Um, just because of my own story and my timeline in the hobby, that 1991 archive set, this is the Mick for me. Um, this is the card that I wanted most of any mantle, and uh, just really, really enthused to have this. Um, the back is pretty nice as well. I, th I think this is a beautiful two and a half. I, I really took my time um, when I picked this up, finding the copy that was right for me, um, that had the attributes and, and the overall look that I was going for. And uh, even as I sit here now, I've had this card a few years, and every single time I take it out, I just have a huge smile on my face as I stare at it. So, you know, a card that could have easily been number one. Um, those of you that have watched a lot of my videos may have even predicted that but uh, actually falls in at number three. Uh, so which two cards beat out the 53 Tops Mantle? Well, in the number two slot, it's the Gretzky Rookie. Um, in this case, the Tops version, 1979 Tops Wayne Gretzky Rookie, card number 18. Uh, bought this at least 10 years ago. I can still remember it vividly. Gotten my holiday bonus. I was like, you know, a, a young, relatively young kid in the grand scheme of life, and I would treat myself to one card, you know, each year with a, a little portion of that bonus, try to save or do something more responsible with the rest of it. But I can still remember like my nerves and apprehension, like stepping up and paying like a few hundred dollars for this card. Um, it was the most I had, I think, ever spent on a card at the time, but it just felt like if there was one card to kind of go for um, and, and go above and beyond and do something special for myself, this was the card. He's the greatest player ever to play the game, in my personal opinion. Um, he was a, a childhood hero of mine growing up playing the game. Um, this is the best hockey set ever produced, in my opinion. And this card right here is the most, or it's Opeachy counterpart, is the single most iconic hockey card ever produced, and I think always will be. Um, now, with so many brands and so many sets, things are saturated a bit. And even guys like Connor McDavid or whoever the next big star is, I'm not sure they, they have that like one card um, like this Gretzky. And, and so I think this will forever be the most iconic hockey card ever produced. Um, no matter how many times I revisit this countdown in the future, I don't see a world in, in which this does not stay inside my top five, uh, no matter what. And so that is the number two selection. And then in the number one spot, a uh, card that it was the first graded card that I, and the first single card that I ever really showed on my channel all the way back in the first episode. Um, got this, fortunately, right before he passed. Um, it's it's maybe the most iconic baseball card of all time. It's certainly in the mix. You know, I may have overstated that a bit. But the 1954 Tops Hank Aaron Rookie. Um, this is my copy. It's probably the only one I'll ever own. It's the only one I ever need. Just really thrilled with it. it you know for a two and a half it just presents so clean um it's it's a gorgeous card and you know as with any of these these last three that we looked at it's uh, a card that i'll be honored to have for the rest of my life and that i honestly never thought i would i would have um growing up or even when i got back into the hobby as an adult and it took me almost 15 years back in the hobby you know 14 13 or 14 anyway um, to finally put this card to bed. And it just goes to show you that, you know, the hobby is definitely a marathon uh, and not a sprint. But I think this is a fitting card, given that it was the first card that I ever showed back in episode one. 
of the channel. I think it's the perfect card to end the countdown at card number one a couple of years later here. So that concludes the top 100 cards shown on YouTube countdown. Certainly hope you enjoyed this. I had a blast putting it together. Um, I may revisit this in the future every couple of years and kind of see what new cards have bumped others out and, and where things stand. Uh, but for now, you know, as of December 2022, those are the 100 cards that I'm putting forward. Really appreciate you uh, sticking it out with me here through more than 30 minutes of video, and especially any of you who took the time to watch all four portions of this countdown. Uh, really appreciate your devotion to, to spending that much time here on the channel. And I will certainly be back in the near future and in the coming year uh, with many more awesome cards that will vie for a spot on this countdown in the future. Uh, but for now, that's a wrap for today. So just take care, everybody. Hope you have a great holiday season here and a happy new year. Keep enjoying the hobby.